Hey everyone, this is Doug from Plum Creek, and I am glad you set aside this time to connect with God. For the next few minutes, I'm going to share some scripture with you and give you several opportunities to pray. The title of this podcast is The Other 97%, and here's the idea behind that name. In a normal week, the average Christian might spend 3% of their waking hours with church-related activities. And that dedicated church time definitely falls under the category of worship. But what about the rest of the week? Uh, What about the other 97%? Well, according to Jesus, the greatest commandment is to love God with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your mind. It's offering your entire life to God, surrendering to him as an act of worship. So that's what this time is about. It's about learning to worship God in whatever we do. All right, let's get started. First, I'm going to read from Psalm 95. And before I do that, make sure you're in a place where you have at least a glimpse of nature. You can go for a walk or a drive. You can sit on the porch or just move to a window where you can look outside. Now, if you need to hit pause so you can find your spot, go ahead and do that. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. Psalm 95, starting with verse 1. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. And the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Now, the writer of this psalm, he he looks at creation And he sees the handiwork of God. All of creation points to the creator. So what are you looking at right now? What do you see in nature? Uh, You might notice the intricate design of a leaf on a tree. Uh, You might see a bird in flight. You might stare up at the vastness of the sky. It's amazing to see these things and think, wow, God made all of this. It's also amazing to look at yourself and think, God made me. He's a great designer, a great artist. His creativity is limitless. His power is undeniable. So I'm going to stop talking for a minute here and turn it over to you. Take a few moments to praise our great God, the one who created the universe. Be specific and name the characteristics of God that are most impressive to you. As we continue, I want to read from John chapter 4. In this chapter, Jesus is having a conversation with a woman from Samaria, and he explains what kind of worshipers God is looking for. Here's what Jesus says in John 4, verse 23. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So, spirit and truth. True worship has to be from the heart. 
and it has to be based on truth. So consider that for a second. Do you worship God in spirit and truth? Let's think about it this way. Has your life been changed by Jesus? If so, do you have a sense of where you would be without him? What would your future look like without God's grace? All of us have sinned. So what would happen if you got the punishment that you deserve? If you've given your life to Jesus, you've been spared from that terrible future. And that should fill us with gratitude and love for Jesus. So take some time right now and thank Jesus for what he's done. And make sure you're not just saying words. Speak from the heart, spirit, and truth. Okay, I'll give you a few moments to do that. All right, I have one more passage to share with you, and this one is focused on how to worship God in our normal, everyday lives. Colossians 3, verses 23 and 24. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. So it doesn't matter if you're a doctor or a student. Finally, I want to wrap this up by giving you some time to just pray on your own. Uh, Go to God with whatever's on your heart. Uh, That could mean you pray for specific needs in your family or in our nation or in our world. Uh, There's definitely a lot to pray about right now. Or maybe you want to use this time for confession. Allow God to deal with the sin. Next, let's think about the relationships you have, either at work or at school or at home. How can you serve Jesus by serving the people around you on an everyday basis? Take a minute and ask God to show you how to do that. Or maybe you just want to spend this time thanking God for all of his blessings. It's up to you. And before I go, I want to thank you for spending this time. It is a great thing to invite God into our everyday lives and worship him. 
All right, now it's your turn. Spend the rest of this time in prayer. Thank you.